Hello and welcome to Bruce and Ed, live from New York. I'm Ed. And I'm Bruce. Welcome. We live at breadtv.com. That's B-R-E-D-T-V.com. It's not spelled like the uh, carbohydrate. B-R-E-D-T-V.com. Today's episode is sponsored by Arvix Web Hosting and Costco Wholesale and Dropbox.com. If you, if you want to watch our show live, you can also chat with us live during the show or even call call in via Skype. Just follow the instructions on breadtv.com. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Great. It's, uh, Great to see you guys. You know, um, as uh, Ed just said, you know, when we're, we broadcast live at 10 a.m. New York time, which is Eastern time, 7 a.m. in L.A. and and all that. If you go to breadtv.com, you'll see a link that shows you what time that is in your city, wherever you are in the planet. And you can chat with us live. We have a chat room that we're uh, watching always during the show. Somebody's watching it and uh, kind of keeping an eye on it. And you can also use um, Gmail chat, otherwise known as Google Talk, um, from your uh, even from your Android phone or whatever device. You know that they have a, a Ustream, because we broadcast live on Ustream.com, which is just U-S-T-R-E-A-M dot TV. I said dot com, but it's not. It's Ustream dot TV. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, if you go to breadtv.com, there's a link that takes you straight there. But anyway, there's a Ustream viewer app on Android. Is there one for... I'm sure there's one for iPhone, too. Uh, well, I haven't checked it in over yeah. six months. So well, if there's, if there's one for Android, I'm pretty sure there's one for iPhone, too. But anyway, the point is you can watch us live wherever you are from your phone. Isn't that crazy? What a world mm-hmm. we live in. And actually, did you know this? I was playing with it. The Ustream app um, where you watch the shows live, you can actually see the chat room scrolling over the lower th- half of the screen. So it's really cool. I don't think you can actually chat yet, but you can at least read the chat room, which is, you know, that's half the fun, seeing what people are saying mm-hmm. um, about the show that you're watching. But anyway, you can watch it live and you can participate in that chat room. And if you have Gmail or uh, Google Talk or any of that on your um, Android phone or your computer or whatever, you can use Gmail chat, which works really, really well. And just, uh, you know, all the instructions are at the breadtv.com website. You can also send out replies via Twitter. We're monitoring that during the show live. And Skype. You can even take Skype call in, which is really cool. You can Skype uh, the name Bread Chat, of course, and uh, we'll have you on Skype and we'll have you up here on the big screen behind us. And, uh, you know, you sound crystal clear like you're sitting right here. So that's fun, too. So. Anyway, lots of ways to chat. As a matter of fact, um, you know, we chat better when we have someone to chat with. We, we chat with each other all the time because we're, right. like, inseparable. <laughs> and we, we probably heard everything each other has to say. But uh, we're not like some co-hosts who, you know, only see each other every two weeks or something like that. We're together 24-7 almost. So um, we chat much better when we have somebody else to chat with. So we want you to appear live with us via chat right here on the big screen behind us. If you're interested in being like a guest co-host for the day and just yapping with us, um, you know, for the day or even just for a, a short time, a segment or whatever, email us at email at breadtv.com. So that's the email address, email at breadtv.com and uh, let us know. There's free coffee involved or uh, virtual coffee if it's via Skype. Anyway, just want to put that out there. So if you know anybody who might be interested in uh, yapping with us live, um, let us know. Give us an email. Great. So um, what's new? What's happening? I guess you're, you wanted me to start off the, the show with um, my topic, which is fine. Uh, probably the uh, following up from the last show that we talked about uh, uh, sunscreens and all this stuff. I don't know if you guys got a chance to listen or watch Uh, but it's following up on the same uh, there's some CNN show um, happening uh, this week um, and uh, there's a doctor Sanjay Gupta he's uh, reporting on pesticides and all the different foods that are in our food system that are 
toxic in ways. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out also from that show, and you guys can go to CNN, it's like on their front page because they're really promoting it, is, uh, but the topic that I wanted to cover today was like five uh, toxic toxins that are everywhere um, in our food supplies and our drinking, you know, bottles and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that, um, you know, a lot of you have probably heard about the different toxic effects, but it's uh, because it's such a pervasive thing, uh, it's definitely worth mentioning. And um, um, so the first one on this list is the bisphenol A, uh, which is um, basically plastic bottles. And yeah, he he just brought it up on the on the background. I can't see and, it. Um, and it's a clear heat resistant uh, plastic, and um, and it's found in water bottles and reusable food. Uh, containers and plastic tableware um, where else infant feeding cups lining of infant formulas cans and uh, the gist of this uh, story is that um, that these chemicals are linked to ailments uh, including cancer sexual problems and behavioral issues um, and the the five products are the BPA, which is the bismol phenol A, and the ph phthalates, some people pronounce it differently, and then there's this PFOA, there's formaldehyde, and then polybrominated diphenyl ethers, or PDBEs, so it's a long names, chemical names, and the tests reveal that most of us now carry them in our bodies, so they are we're drinking them, we're inhaling them, we're, uh, they're all over the place, so much so that they're, now they can actually test it in most people's bodies and find some kind of uh, residue of, the, of these uh, plastics and stuff that they're putting into these. So I just wanted to run down the list and, uh, and uh, the reason I brought it up is because there's, you know, there's ways to avoid or to reduce the exposure of these. Um, and I just wanted to quickly go through so the list. They say that, uh, it says here, this is CNN.com. It says that they're doing this, as you said, this uh, special uh, Toxic America, they call it. This That's the June, name of it, yeah, June Toxic 2nd, America. <clears throat> June 2nd and 3rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So that was like last night and tonight. Yeah, you and you can you go mean, to their webpage and look at these you can at probably any watch time. It, yeah. Watch the video later but if you mm -hmm. probably just google cnn toxic america download you might even be able to download it somewhere so uh that looks like something worth watching the special too yeah and this, this is from like a very well recognized medical doctor speaking out ab uh, about these things so um that's it's finally scary. uh sort of mainstream in a way that's you know? scary because there's plastic in everything i mean every food that we eat every beverage we drink is either if it's not served in plastic it's delivered in plastic everything is like what doesn't touch plastic right and this uh, children are the most affected by these things uh, and then adults of course as well but not in uh, such high concentrations that it, as it is being found in children uh, why so is that uh, well I think that children in smaller bodies <laughs> well, I think that children are start are or babies are now starting to be born with these chemicals already in their system. That's why mm. they're bringing this to the light. That the tests reveal that most of us now carry them in our bodies. So um, I'm not sure that's exactly horrible. if they're finding them in babies, but I I believe that that's part of the research that's being um, found out now. And uh, so for the BPA, which everyone talks about, is the plastics in water bottles, etc. Um, how we're exposed, it's obvious. I already said it. We, you know, drink this stuff, and uh, the health effects are cancer-producing health effects. Um, there's some type of regulation that uh, the Environmental Protection Agency is looking into to t to try and curb you know this exposure uh, but mainly what you need to know and what you can do to reduce the exposure 
uh, is to buy uh, stainless steel bottles or glass bottles. For example, what we do here at our home is uh, whenever I um, buy milk or whatever we buy, I immediately place it into glass bottles. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you're well, ever what about those you know regular milk cartons that are like wa are they wax lined paper? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are those better than uh, plastic? Uh, yeah, I think they are if y if you had to choose one. Yeah. You can't get milk. Oh, it's hard to get milk in glass containers anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, if you go to an organic store, you might find it, but no, not really, because it's it's so heavy. But once you once you it arrives at your house and it comes in plastic, it's spent most of its time in plastic anyway. I mean, you switch it to to glass is fine, but isn't it better if you could buy it in something? That's trans so that it's been transported in something safer. Yeah, ideally, yes. But I mean, you know, the the reason I switch it is because like I buy my milk from a local dairy farmer and I buy raw milk actually. So that milk they do bring it in plastic, uh, but it's only been in that plastic for maybe a day or two because it's coming straight from the farm. So in my mind, I just think you know, mm -hmm. overall, it'll be better just to put it in glass. And like uh, everything else, if you if you buy it in glass, or if they were if they were even to sell it in glass, it would cost a lot more because there's so mm -hmm. much. I mean, you're hauling glass, which is much heavier, obviously, and then you've got to return it probably for deposit and handle all that mm -hmm. stuff. You know, used milk bottles unless you wash them yourself they're gonna you know that's kind of probably a health hazard to return i don't know but i mean the old days my grandparents had the milkman delivered glass bottles um you know in a previous life i'm not really that old <laughs> but i remember yeah. hearing stories <laughs> about my grandparents uh receiving no the, the milkman would come and bring a, a box on your porch and it'd be milk bottles but of course yeah. they drive a truck around you know that's not very friendly for the environment either driving mm -hmm. a truck around delivering milk but I guess things we had different values then yeah I don't know I mean what is, isn't it like what's the safest material besides glass because glass is so heavy that it seems like the paper with the wax lining uh, does that have any toxic effects uh, no not that I'm aware of I mean there could so why be why not just buy the paper cardboard milk Instead of the plastic ones. Yeah, because normally, like, if you buy more than, like, a liter or, or half a gallon, then it always comes in plastic. So, I mean, yeah. you don't, uh, those, I think those... You can buy multiple half gallons, but... Right. You know, but then you end up spending more. more. Most people are looking for value, so mm -hmm. they end up with a gallon, and, a yeah. and everyone drinks milk. Because so. we hear all these stories all the time about all the things that cause cancer. Everything seems to cause cancer. But I very seldom hear the solution. What are we going to do? Regulate? You know, what can you do? If, it, if everything is coming in plastic, and it's because people are buying it in plastic, they want it in plastic because it's cheaper. They want cheaper and they want it efficient and they want it easy to carry they want it no no want to have to return anything they think oh it's it's green enough because we can recycle some plastic or whatever i don't know if that's really true how much of it really does get recycled but the they what they want is cheaper 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 that's why walmart is so successful mm -hmm. you know so it's really hard i mean if they regulate it then that just means you're going to have less options you know, everything's going to be forced to be put in glass or something, or what are they going to do? That, or it'll innovate creativity into some other form of container. I mean, uh, some new uh, plastic <laughs> you know, <laughs> that we haven't researched. That's the yet. thing that I mean, we're going through this oil spill now, and people are really getting very upset about it. And uh, and this might be just enough to trigger people just to not want to consume it. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I doubt it. We live in a chemical world. I know. Like, what about seafood? Oh, man. I don't even want to think about what that oil spill is going to do. Yeah. That's just really, really horrible. That's one of the... It's just a national... I mean, it's a global disaster mm -hmm. that is just too painful to even think about, really. Yeah. Well, without moving into another subject, I mean, um, I think they're, they're this week the, they're rallying in, like, all 10 big cities in America... Because they're trying to um, like freeze BP's assets before they like hmm. give them away to their CEOs. Their and record then, profits. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, well, the government. They're protesting. I mean, the p American people should not uh, be forced to pay for this cleanup until after all of BP's assets have been spent on it. 
all, right, but every the idea last time. is that you know Americans are getting smarter. They're realizing that freeze their assets. It, fast. They can protest all they want, you yeah. know, but the CEOs are going to walk away with and their, their multi-million dollar uh, no. payouts. They're going to fly if they away can in freeze their private the jets. Assets, <laughs> yeah, if they can freeze the assets and rally people to do it right away, or the government to do it right away, they might prevent you know all this. Yeah money going somewhere else before and I doubt that they'll be able to freeze all their assets because it's a global corporation but anyway, and it's not an American corporation yeah. but anyway but anyway um, back to the bismol phenol which is the BPA uh, and plastics um, uh, ways to reduce exposure is buy stainless steel bottles and glass food storage containers if you buy plastic check for the recycle number on the bottom if it says seven then you want to stay away from it and uh, you know don't heat up any kind of plastics in the microwave, etc. Use glass containers. On the glass when you heat it up in the microwave. Uh huh. And then the um, the other one is uh, phthalates, which is uh, spelled with a P. Phthalates. And um, where are they found? And um, phthalates are used to um, uh, mainly to soften plastics or to it's a fa family of chemicals that softens plastics. They also use to bind chemicals together. Um, there's obvious health effects related to that so and how you can reduce your exposure to it because uh, they use it in shampoos and conditioners and other uh, personal care products um, the um so all these are these are all going to be on this web page if you go to cnn.com and just search for uh, five toxins you're going to find all these details right um, so anyway, or watch the show, watch the special. Yeah, that's why I wanted Toxic to cover America. it because people don't necessarily yeah. might not have the time to do it, but they want to listen to what we have to say about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, avoid shampoos and conditioners that have on their ingredients list fragrance because they're made with phthalates, and mm -hmm. um, and they don't disclose if they have phthalates or not. Um, and the government's trying to do something about that. The other one is called PFOA, which is uh, also called C8. And that's basically Teflon, and it's made to make Teflon and used on other thousands of other nonstick and uh, stain and water repellent products. Um, and then uh, what to do to reduce the exposure, basically um, buy stainless steel or cast iron um, cookware. And if you use nonstick cookware, do not overheat it, which releases toxic effects. The other one is formaldehyde, and uh, it's an ingredient in resins that acts as glue and is uh, in the manufacture of pressed wood products. So basically, your furniture contains tons of it. I know one time I read that uh, like um, sheets that are um, like they call these if you buy sheets for your your bed or whatever that are um, what are the ones that are called that uh, you don't have to iron or whatever. The permanent press. Permanent press, yeah. The ones that, that say permanent press or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, those contain some forms of formaldehyde. If you notice, those smell a little differently as well. So you want to stay away uh, from, um, you know, formaldehyde, mm -hmm. basically. Wow. Uh, and um, you, you have to stay away from everything. Basically, everything in your home. Yeah, I mean, it's you buy furniture chemicals. free of formaldehyde, eliminates exposure, obviously. Uh, and then uh, the other one is problem. Uh, PBDE, uh, which is a group of chemical used as a flame retardant, and they reduce the chance of something catching on fire, and that's also in furniture. And uh, what you can do to reduce the exposure is to find products without them. It'll say PBDE, flame retardant, and be sure to uh, sweep up dust because if you have it in your in your home, um, the idea is that eventually it deteriorates, and then. Um, it becomes into dust and then it, you inhale it so uh, those are the five things and um, I guess uh, we're gonna go into okay. yeah I just uh, want to take a moment to thank our sponsors because um, our, sp our sponsors for today's show are Arvix web hosting first of all Arvix is the web hosting uh, company that we use they do uh, domain registration as well and they have you know excellent web hosting. The thing I like about it, obviously, they have you know high, super high uptime. We, we've never had an outage actually using it. Um, it's by the way, it's it's Arvix. I always pronounce it wrong, but it's A R V I X E. Arvix is how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. Arvix.com. 
and um, you can register domains with them, which we do, and uh, which are competitive prices, the same or less than anywhere else. And one of the things that they do is when you have a web hosting account, you can they give you a one domain name registered free, and then they'll renew that forever for life as long as you maintain that web hosting account. And their prices are unbelievably affordable. Um, there's one package that gives you like I think it's up to four or six domains hosted with with that hosting account. Then there's another package that's just a couple dollars more that gives you unlimited, absolutely unlimited number of domains hosted on it, unlimited everything, unlimited storage, unlimited bandwidth, and everything. It's really really affordable. Um, but the most important thing to two things to me are uptime. And the other thing is their customer service. Their customer service is phenomenal. You can call them 24 hours a day and you actually get a live technical person who will either show you how to do it or do it for you, whichever you prefer. They're, they're excellent. Their customer service is, is just um, second to none. Arvix.com. Yeah, A-R-V-I-X-E.com. And Costco Wholesale. Costco, <clears throat> well, <laughs> we buy everything at Costco. We've been members of Costco forever mm-hmm. since we lived in Florida, and uh, what we 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 plan like a joint trip because we live in Manhattan. So there aren't any. Well, actually, there is one now in Manhattan. There's a new one up uptown in Manhattan. Harlem. But, mm-hmm. but there are like three or four within the area, and we just make a road trip and have some friends, and we all go together in the car to Costco once every month or two. But uh, we buy everything there. Everything that you can find there is going to be the same price or less and excellent quality pretty much they they specialize uh, not like some of the other wholesale clubs they specialize in um, a high quality product it seems like they don't carry it if it's if, it, if they get a lot of returns or if the quality is not up to par they don't carry it for long mm-hmm. what do you think about Costco yeah I think they're <laughs> great and you can return anything you don't like even if it's a year later I love that yeah. And uh, you can go to Costco.com, and uh, the prices there are all inclusive of shipping and handling and all the... They'll include shipping on there? Mm-hmm. You know, the, I know one thing, Costco.com is, is like a different store altogether. Even though it's the same membership, you, uh, you have different products on Costco.com that are not necessarily in the store and vice versa. So it's really cool. You can It's like two different memberships. You can shop at Costco.com. For example, we bought our uh, mattresses. We bought these memory foam mattresses, which are quite expensive if you buy them otherwise. But they're, you know, super super affordable at Costco, and they just deliver them UPS. It comes in a, a little box the size. It's a queen size memory foam mattress. Came in a little box the size of a like an uh, office refrigerator or something, really tiny. Mm-hmm. And you cut it open, and it just expands. And people say, you know, I've read online in the forums. You can check it out that um, they're very very happy because. A year later, if you don't like that thing, they will come and I don't know if they pick it up or they send you the materials or somehow and you return it, you can return things. You know, anything you don't like, they're very, very generous about taking it back. And so we, we love to uh, shop at Costco. Mm-hmm. I, this, you know, our home is furnished at Costco pretty much. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> Not to mention food and so on. And then also we want to thank um, Dropbox. <clears throat> Dropbox is amazing. Um, it's... A little bit hard to describe because it, it's like created a whole new uh, uh, business model, a whole new platform. Really, what Dropbox does, it's a service that synchronizes your files among different computers and uh, with different operating systems. You can have Windows on one, Mac on another, even Linux, Ubuntu Linux on a third, um, your iPhone, your Android all kinds of different devices it'll synchronize all your files we use it here we have the maximum size you can get uh, plus they give you free storage if you make referrals so we've got like a total of 116 gigabytes of storage on there and we only put on there pretty much we only put on there the things that are irreplaceable like family photos and documents so we Mm -hmm. use it like a file server what happens is you put the document on your computer and you store everything inside your Dropbox on your computer and then Instantly, like within seconds, as soon as I save it on my computer, boom, a message pops up on all the other computers. This document was just saved, and it's now accessible on every computer we have, wherever it may be, including the Android and the iPhone and everything. Mm-hmm. It's brilliant. So it does what it does. It synchronizes your files among all your computers, which obviously, in effect, backs them up. So I could drop my laptop in a lake 
and I all nothing is lost. Everything is still there. And you have as many, I mean, nothing could be a better backup because if you have six computers, you have seven copies of everything. Right. One on each of the six computers plus one out there on the web uh, for Dropbox. And you can even log on from any web browser, log on and go to dropbox.com and log on and you can access all your files from any web browser and download your file if you need to. With someone else's computer. Any, anywhere, yeah. Even even an internet cafe or something. And finally, you can actually share documents. So, for example, if there's a, um, whatever, some flyer that we created or something and it's on my Dropbox, I can uh, right-click on it and, and it says get public URL and I can actually email that link to people or text message it to them. They can click the link and now they have a copy of the document. So, And it can also be like a video, music, photo, any kind of file. So you can actually send uh, very large files that way. Just by sending one link in an email with zero attachments, they can just click the link and download whatever that file is. So it's a brilliant service. It's dropbox.com. Check it out. <laughs> All right, so moving right along. The, the, uh, my topic is, uh, my next topic is about um, smartphones, the new smartphones. Everyone always asks me, uh, naturally it's about technology. I talk about technology a lot. And um, I talk about health, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you know, we make a good team. The, the thing, and actually I want, by the way, this is a good put, point to put in a plug. Um, I'm going to be starting a new weekly show called Absotechly. Spelled just like it sounds, A B S O T E C H L Y. Absotechly.com is where it will live, and it's going to be a weekly show that's all about technology. So I'll be able to talk less about technology on this and uh, more on that. So you can, if you're really into technology, you can subscribe to that one, and uh, you'll hear. Uh, we'll have some really amazing technology guests and stuff. But anyway, this is uh, a question that I get all the time, and that is, what's the best phone to buy? I need a new phone. What phone should I buy? That's and where I'm at. I'm, I need to buy a new phone. That so many people, <clears throat> so many people are in this boat. And so a friend of mine recently asked me. Uh, he says he has Metro PCS, which I, I, you know, I love Metro PCS. We'll get to that in a minute. But I actually recommended that he get it, so that's why he has it. And he's asking me, what about this? Uh, you know, which phone should I buy? I saw this Samsung Code. Should I buy it? I said no. I don't. I don't really like it much. Um, I at this point. My recommendation, I would not buy a phone unless it had Android Linux on it, um, which basically just means Android. If it has Android, it's good. Um, mm -hmm. The Android is a version of Linux, by the way. Most people don't even know. The people in the phone store don't even know that. But anyway, if it says Android, you can't go too far wrong. However, I mean, I wouldn't buy a phone that has Windows Mobile on it. Um, I'm not a big fan of BlackBerry. Um, BlackBerry sales are going down fast, iPhone sales are going down fast, and the only one that's rising is rising fast, and that's the the Android. Any phone that uh, has the Android operating system on it, for good reason, because it really is amazing. So right now, my recommendation, and mind you, my recommendations used to be, for, for cell phones, used to be like, they'd last a year, and then they went to like six months, and then three months. Now I would say maybe one or two months, <laughs> one or two months at most, because things are changing so, 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 so fast. The, um, like this, well, my recommendation right now is the HTC Evo. Spelled E-V-O. Right. Uh, HTC Evo. Now, um, I am not married to one cell phone company. Uh, you know, the, uh, the top four cell phone companies, they're all pretty comparable. I mean, they're going to give you reasonable phone service um, pretty much everywhere in the US so I'm not really really that tied I'm, I'm more interested in the quality of the device because especially now because phones have changed they, they really aren't so much phones as computers they're pocket computers right so um, they're not laptops they're pocket tops they're like pocket computers they really are and people are using them for email web browsing and text messaging and Twitter and all the rest more, much more than they're using it to actually hold it up to their face and talk. Mm -hmm. So the... I think just recently that, that that's true. Yeah, exactly. It's It's been happening that way. So uh, more and more. So the 
to me, the device is a lot more important than the phone company. As long as it's one of the top four, you really can't go too far wrong. It's going to work when you need it at the airport or whatever. So anyway, the HTC Evo is phenomenal. They keep leapfrogging each other. And the so what's happened is I have the, the uh, Motorola Droid, and I love the Motorola Droid. Now the HTC Incredible came out, and it's like, Phenomenal! It really beat all the specs. It's better now. Um, actually, the Incredible, ju- yeah, just came out the end of last last month. Mm-hmm. And um, now the the same company, HTC, they're they're leapfrogging themselves. The HTC Evo is co- uh, coming out tomorrow, actually June fourth. So here's the deal: the HTC Evo is the best phone in the U.S. in my opinion, and it's op- it works on Sprint. It works on Sprint's 4G network. They call it 4G, in which, by the way, 3G, 4G, all that stuff is just a marketing term, you know. It's actually Sprint's new WiMAX network, which is, fa- it's one of the, you know, it's the first, uh, what they're calling 4G data speed networks in the U.S., WiMAX. And, um, what is so, it, like 10, like, or? I don't know. I don't want to quote that, the specs, the speed, and all that, because I, I don't know. Just go to sprint.com and you can, you can Google it and find out that, those details. But my, the bottom line is the HTC Evo is the best. It's got a large screen, it's got dual cameras, it's got a camera facing both directions. It's, so it's capable of video calls. You can actually call each other and see each other on video, like Skype. And it's got a camera on both sides. It's got, you know, the works. It's got, you know, HD video. It's got HDMI out. So which means you can plug your phone into your into anybody's HD TV and then watch movies right there on their flat screen TV in HD coming out of your phone. It's like a little TiVo in your box or something. I mean, in your pocket with <laughs> HD TiVo. Okay. Right. This technology is amazing. So... Um, it's very important you get the right phone because you don't want just any old phone that says Android or even any old phone that says Droid because they're using that as a marketing term too. Right. So anyway, number one, HTC Evo on Sprint. Number two, HTC Incredible on Verizon. And then the third best, in my opinion, is the Motorola Droid. Make sure it's the Motorola Droid, by um, which is also available through Verizon in that order. Mm-hmm. So... And I know that iPhone or Apple just, I mean, I'm sorry, AT&T just came out with a new data pricing plan, which actually reduces some of the previous costs. Um, so it reduces it by like $10, $10 or so. And they're saying that, you know, that most of all the other companies will follow suit. Yeah, we expect them Soon. to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, AT&T dropped their, pl- their rate plans, and I would expect that Verizon and the others probably will follow suit very, very yeah. soon. They're going to have to. They have, they have to keep dropping. And then, which is a perfect segue into the other thing I wanted to mention, which is uh, my favorite cell phone company is Metro PCS. And people are like, oh, Metro PCS, oh, that's, <laughs> that's you know, garbage. But it's not. It's really not. Metro PCS is, uh, I think it's the fourth largest. It might be the third largest. I, I think they surpassed one of the companies. They're either in the top three or top four co- uh, cell phone companies in the U.S. They have um, these deals. They're they're like cutting the way. They're on the cutting edge of this new price revolution when it comes to cell phones, which I love. It's unlimited everything, absolutely unlimited. Unlimited minutes, unlimited text messaging, unlimited web browsing, unlimited everything. There's no such thing as a bill. There's no such thing as an extra charge. Or contract. There's no contract. There's no contract, but imagine this. There's no bill. You know, you, you pay a certain price, whether it, it's thirty nine ninety five a month or whatever they're charging, uh, 40 bucks a month, you know, depends on the market and so on. But uh, basically, it's a flat rate. If it's 40 bucks a month, it's 40 bucks a month. And every month, they're going to charge your credit. If you set it up this way, they'll charge your credit card automatically 40 bucks a month. That's it. 40, 40, 40. That's it. There's no extra charges. So there's no such thing as a roaming charges or long distance or anything like that. Even their international calling for a, a real small fee, you can add international calling and you get free unlimited international calling. Text messaging, same thing. They give you... I mean, in the U.S., it's free unlimited text messaging anyway. Um, and then I think maybe it's a small fee, or it might be included, the international... Te- I, it, at most, it's a very small fee for unlimited international text messaging on your phone. Those are really, really cool things. Yeah. The only thing I'm disappointed about with uh, Metro PCS... Well, wait, I'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing about Metro PCS is that they're... Okay, there's normal, what they call 3G data networks that everybody knows. We all use that now. 
that's kind of the state of the art, except you. You've got a real old original iPhone. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, everybody else is at 3G, they call it. That's a marketing term, not a technical term. But anyway, um, now Sprint has this one called WiMAX. They're calling it 4G. Okay. Well, there's another one that's like faster, even faster yet. It's called LTE, and it's not out yet. Maybe LTE stands for late. But no, mm-hmm. it actually stands for long-term evolution, which doesn't matter. But anyway, LTE is coming out the end of 2010 in the U.S., and it's only coming on two companies uh, initially. The first two companies to have it will be Metro PCS and Verizon. So obvi- <laughs> it's very interesting because Verizon is, you know, many people say Verizon is the most expensive carrier. I don't know if that's true. And Metro PCS is one of the least expensive carriers. So I'm really excited that Metro PCS is going to have LTE because it's going to be, you know, one of the least expensive carriers is going to have the fa- one of the fastest networks. Right. The That's only right. now the only problem I have with Metro PCS is I don't like their phones. Th- their phones are crap. I mean, it's like we're waiting for an Android phone. As soon as Metro PCS is able to work out the deal with HTC, come on, HTC, you're coming out with a new model every week. Come out, HTC, come out with a phone for Metro PCS that runs Android. And Metro PCS, just get anything that runs Android, and everybody will buy it. Because with unlimited data, text, email, all that stuff on an Android device, that is a an absolute killer app. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's in the range of thirty, forty, even fifty dollars a month. Fixed price would be even better. Oh my god, that will be killer. Which Absolutely. they've always have had a fixed price, so yeah, people most are going. They you know, have that. people were used to like I got my hair cut the other day, and the, my barber says, you know, I was paying sixty dollars a month on whatever company, and then I he got the Motorola Droid, and now he's paying something close to a hundred, hundred and ten dollars a month after tax. And um, the thing is, if you can go to a Metro PCS deal, and if it's $40 a month or even $50 a month, less than half of anybody else for the same service or better. You know, that's the other thing. The signal on Metro PCS is good. At least in New York City, there's only two services that work on our elevators here in this building, and Verizon and Metro PCS. And Metro PCS doesn't drop the call. Verizon does sometimes, but Metro PCS doesn't. So the, the signal is awesome here. It's not awesome everywhere, though. It, it works great in Florida. They just expanded to, you know, they're in pretty much all the big cities, but there are some, there's one or two cities that um, are still sketchy. They're still working. They're still building it out. Um, but it's going to have, when they're done building it out, see, it's going to be the newest network because right. they just built it. So Metro PCS is very exciting. Get an Android phone, Metro PCS, and HTC Work out a deal with them. That that's going to be a killer app right there. Because, if, like I said, for fifty bucks a month, you can get a, the state of the art HTC Android on Metro PCS. Everyone will immediately cancel their contracts, which is another thing. Don't be afraid to cancel your contract because often your monthly bill is not much less than the cancellation fee. Mm-hmm. So you'll save enough to cancel your contract in one month. So don't be afraid to cancel your contract if you find a much better deal much better phone, things like that. Mm-hmm. So that's the end of my rant about that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking at the Evo because uh, I really want to get a f- new phone as well. And uh, I'm just contemplating whether I really want CDMI and Sprint along with it. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm sure you'll find out <laughs> as soon as I have it because I'll be all crazy and googly over it. <laughs> uh, so... Anyway. Googly is that a is that a word? <laughs> You're gonna be googling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> meaning I want to tell you everything about it. Google wide, <laughs> Google wide. We'll do the unboxing live, <laughs> but like anybody else, it's all over YouTube. Yeah. Well, no, actually, it's it's not coming out till tomorrow. So tomorrow yeah. it'll be on YouTube. I'm well, I can't wait to be able to plug it into my <laughs> TV and watch TV shows, or when I go to my mom's or somewhere, friends and. That's the biggest thing he's excited about is plugging his phone into a TV mm-hmm. and watching it. That's mm-hmm. cool. That's fine. Well, I'll be able to use it as like a little... A TiVo. TiVo, right. Mm-hmm. Pocket TiVo. The only thing, I think that the the memory seems kind of low. I thought it was like one gig or something. I don't know. Let's find out. I'll have to look it up. But um, I overheard one person saying that and I was like, oh, I got to look that up. But I never did. Um, so anyway... Uh, Let's see. One of the other things that I've had on the list to talk about, which I thought was kind of cool and just worth mentioning, uh, is this 
new website called uh, this is about probably relationships on the topic of relationships and stuff like that. Let me. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Real, yeah. I just want to tell you. I just googled it. HTC Evo. It says four gig memory cards um, available. So I think the D, if I remember reading right, to, not to interject, but the um, or interrupt, but the it it may come with a small amount of memory, but then you can upgrade it with a card. Oh, uh, I hope so. So. Up to four gig or something like that. Because anyway, four gig that. is like, you know, one or two movies or three maybe at the most. So yeah. for me, okay. that's going to be a little tough to navigate. But um, okay, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll research that and let get back to you. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure if I end up getting it, we'll give everyone the specs. Uh, so anyway, the topic uh, was about cheatconfessions.com. It's this new website where you people are going and posting their um, their cheating ways, uh, <laughs> which I thought uh, the only reason I wanted to bring it up because I thought that that would be it's a good place to anonymously anonymously uh, post you know what you're going through. And people are posting why and the, uh, the reasons why and um, and what brought them to that point. And there's some real funny ones actually uh, to read. And they don't go, you know, it's not long drawn out big confessionals, uh, but just like a maybe a one or two paragraph blurbs. And then people comment, of course, on it. And then there's like a stick with it or move on. Uh, buttons that you can press for <laughs> people. It or, uh, yeah. It's all about relationships? Uh, it's about your cheating confessions. So, Because oh. a lot of people cheat and then they don't want to tell anyone. They don't want to tell their best friends or that's the only one person they tell. Or they might not tell anyone. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's... What's it called again? It's called cheatconfession.com and... Cheat yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, I think that uh, it's a it'll be a pretty popular website if anything for entertainment's sake, because uh, <laughs> you can go on there and just uh, see what people are talking about and and why they're cheating and how it came about, and also to get feedback and comments on maybe what you should do or or if you're even thinking about it. Uh, you'll go. You can go in there and see what other people are saying about why or how they cheat. And uh, and let's face it, you know, there's obviously people get divorces in this country. In in more than 50 percent people that are married end up in divorce. So you know, cheating is something that's going on, and uh, and that most people don't ever hear about or talk about. It's always in a negative light. So, um, so here's it's a very interesting thing. I, the, I think I kind of uh, uh, align this with uh, there's this other website which I can't remember the name, but it's uh, like a text messaging confession kind of thing. Text from last night. Yeah, text from last night. It's That's we go there like every six months or so and just have a few laughs. And we uh, sometimes like when we're in a group of people. That's funny. Uh, we'll. I'll bring it up and start, and I'll read a few of the ones just to get a good laugh. Well, it's called textfromlastnight.com, and it's, um, I think the, you know, I think, I don't know how many are real and how many are just, like, people made it up made to it be up, funny, yeah. but anyway, th then the the view or the readers can vote on them. Yeah, they do good or bad or whatever, and they vote them up, so it's kind of like Dig or something, where they they can actually rate how good they are, so the funniest ones are the best. And uh, so anyway, it's it's cute. Texts with an S. Texts from last night dot com. Right. So that may or may not be real. But this cheat cheat confession. It's interesting. I'm looking at it now, and they show a graph. Uh, cheaters and cheating on. Uh, fifty two percent all time rate according to this survey. Fifty two percent are male and forty eight percent are female. I don't know. You know, mm. I don't know if that's what that really means because. Only cheaters would go to this page. That doesn't mean that 52% of males cheat because, you know what I mean? Like, There's only people who were cheating would be filling out this survey. So, it's right. like, not very scientific. Yeah, I mean, it's a blog. So, I mean, yeah. take it for what it is. Just don't put your name on there. Oh, but uh, you're supposed to vote. I see. Move on or stick with it. 
So and comment too as to comment. what you think. Um, oh boy! And so you might get some interesting comments back if you're obsessive. It sounds like an obsessive uh, chick flick destination site. Because it's going to be like reading all the details about, you know, but he was so sweet and he brought me flowers, oh, whatever. And then you're supposed to decide with and with a 10 second, two sentence little blurb whether to give them another chance or dump them. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which some are obvious, okay. you know. Oh, it says female cheated on, female other person. Oh, they're the other person. Right. Oh my gosh. Yep. Yeah, There's I read a, some of them, and they were kind of, some of them were some, somewhat funny. I mean, no one, we shouldn't be laughing at other people's uh, dramas in their life, but I thought that... Well, uh, assuming that they're real, they could be made for comedy, you know. Some people make that stuff yeah, up just to be cute. this stuff looks pretty legitimate. Um, so, you know, I just thought I'd bring it up just because uh, we'd like to make some, some of the topics about relationships and... Cheating. Um, <laughs> and so <laughs> they're gonna be started on this topic. Yeah, I, I know, know we have a lot here. to say about that, which we haven't covered much lately. But um, but we will. And we want to have guests that you know, like like authors of books on these topics, because uh, I ask good questions. We'll have a lot of fun. We'll have definitely have a lot of fun um, covering topics like this. But yeah, I mean that just I don't know that just grates on my. It's like I, it's like. Chalk, I like fingernails on a chalkboard to me to hear even cheatconfession.com. It's like, you know, the term cheating I have a problem with from the very, very beginning. So anyway, don't get me started on that. We'll talk about, we'll, we're going to talk a lot more about things like this in the future. Mm -hmm. And also, by the way, when you're looking at breadtv.com, B-R-E-D-T-V.com, there's, um, there's a thing, a button or a, an area on the right where it says show categories. So if you're not interested in stuff like this, like relationships and stuff, then you could just click the category you're interested in. The categories we list there are money, body, love, tech, which is technology, celebrity, and spirit. So if you're interested in, um, you know, whatever, say if you're not interested in this sort of thing, relationships and stuff, then don't click on the love one, you know. If you're only interested in hearing about technology, click on the tech one, and you're going to see every episode where we talk about technology. So we're going to tag them and basically categorize the shows into logical categories so you can see what you're interested in and mm -hmm. skip the rest. Right. So, all right. My uh, next thing I wanted to bring up is uh, I don't know how many people actually have Google Voice yet, but if you don't have it, you should have it. It's amazing. Um, you know, Google has outdone themselves with uh, email. Well, obviously with search first, Google search, obviously. Um, you know, you want to know anything, you use Google search. And that seems like as obvious as it's daylight in the daytime. You know, it seems just so obvious. But people forget to use it in many, many instances, Google search, for example, when they really should, they benefit. For example, uh, tech support. One of the best tech support tools in the world is Google.com. You get an error message and it just says blah, 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 blah. You don't understand what the heck it means, but it says error code X100.23G4. Well, you just take that error code, put it into Google search, and bingo, you're going to find all kinds of information. And maybe it'll tell you, unplug the printer, take out the ink, put it back in, and plug it in, and that fixes it. You will get answers. It's just amazing. It's, it's just a profound invention, this Google search. And I don't need to, you know, I just want to reiterate that whenever you have a question, <laughs> Google it, you know, first. Think of, you know, God knows everything, but God gets his information because he Googles it first. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, so Google's outdone themselves with search, obviously. They've outdone themselves with email. Everybody who's a tech geek, we all know, we use Gmail. Everybody uses Gmail. And now there's, you know, Google Calendar and Google Docs and all that stuff that keep improving literally every week, they get better. Well, there's a service called Google Voice, which is uh, limited, it's invitation only, so not everybody has it. But Google Voice is an amazing service. It's a telephone service. And it gives you a phone number that you can program in really amazing, clever ways. And an inbox that is sort of like your email inbox, another inbox. But it's for text messaging and voicemails. And 
what it does, you can set it up so that when they call your number, it'll ring on all of your phones, your home phone, cell phone, office phone, whatever. You can program the dates and the times that it's going to ring or whatever, days and times and things like that. Anyway, it has amazing features, records calls, transcribes messages into text messages, and all sorts of amazing features. Well, anyway, if you have, if you don't have Google Voice, you can buy an inv invite on eBay, I've seen. Um, we have a couple invites, so if you really want a Google Voice invite and you ha you've signed up and you ha you can't get one, send an email to email at breadtv.com, and uh, the first couple people who do um, will send you an invite. Um, anyway, this is something for people who already have Google Voice or are going to have it. I've discovered this new feature that they've added that's really, really cool. Uh, you may not notice it for a long time, so I want to uh, give you a heads up. It's called Do Not Disturb, so it sounds really simple, but when you go into Google Voice, you click on Settings, and then you click on Calls, and then there's this new option at the bottom called, do, it's actually Do Not Disturb has always been there, but there's this Do Not Disturb for duration. So you can say, like when we're taping our show, that's what we use, we go Do Not Disturb for one hour, for the next one hour. So you can set it for eight hours, 12 hours, four hours, just the evening, whatever. You're going to sleep, and mm -hmm. you absolutely don't want the phone ringing, do not disturb for the next eight hours. Your phone will not ring. It'll still go to voicemail, take the messages, and everything else will work, but your phones won't ring. So it's brilliant. So we set that up. Do not disturb for the next one hour. The phones are not going to ring. Even if you forgot to turn off one of the phones or something, it will not ring. So <laughs> that's a brilliant little feature. The whole concept behind it, well, we've been using it for many years now, actually. It was first Grand Central .com, Grand Central. And they were bought by Google. and. Forgot that. Um, and then now, you know, it's Google Voice. So it's like if you want to be up and with technology and incorporate it into your daily life with phones. I'm not sure how many subscribers they have. But, uh, I know at one point I read a news article where they bought a million phone numbers in bulk. Um, but I'm imagining they probably only have um, X million, you know, in the single digits of numbers of millions of subscribers. Whereas, you know, with the other services, they may have yeah. tens of millions uh, or more. And it's very reliable. I mean, at least yeah. for me, it works At first, well. they had issues, but now it seems to be very reliable, so we're mm -hmm. very, very happy with it. Yeah, Google they've Voice. really done a great job of scaling it. You can buy an invite on eBay. Typically, I've seen them advertised for as little as $2, but uh, I haven't checked in a while, so I'm assuming that's still the case. Mm -hmm. And like I said, for the first few people that we have, I don't know, maybe four or five invites. So for the first few people who um, send us a request for one, we'll send you an invite. Yeah, I have like three, I think, on mine. Cool. So, um, all right. Well, I, want, I also wanted to say, uh, reiterate, that if you're interested in being a guest co-host for the day, and if you live in New York City area, you could actually join us in physical form right, right here. Right between us. Right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could be the meat and the bread sandwich or something like that. That doesn't sound right. But anyway, um, you can meet, you can mm -hmm. join us live in person here. But if you're assuming you're not in New York City, you can join us right here, still in between us, on um, video via Skype. So if you have uh, Skype, down, if you don't, download Skype, S-K-Y-P-E dot com, obviously, and uh, plug in a webcam. They're $24 at Best Buy. Just plug in a webcam, get Skype, and um, the webcams have mics built in now. That's You have no excuse. You can be our guest co-host for the day and join us and chat with uh, Ed and I live during the show. And if you're interested in doing that, send us an email to email at breadtv.com, and uh, we'll look forward to doing that with you. So... Thank you very much. We enjoyed the show today, sharing it with you. And um, we will see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. And we'll see you tomorrow. Join us in our chat room. Don't yes. forget, give us feedback. 10 a.m. New York time, which is 9 a.m. in Chicago, 7 a.m. in L.A., and I don't know what, 10 p.m. in China. But go to breadtv.com and you'll see. Check what time that is in my city. And you'll find it. Until tomorrow. Bye.